Well, hello. Welcome to the Irrelevant Podcast with DQ. This is your host, uh, DQ. That's right. And the Irrelevant Podcast is being brought to you by caffeine, nicotine, quarantine, and a little bit of marijuana. Sorry, I scratched that. A lot of bit of marijuana. Um... Bunch of drunk kids just walked up in my house. Not kids, sorry. Young adults. Uh, I'm calling them kids. A bunch of fucking uh, hooligans. Uh, They're going to start making noise in the background. Apologize for anybody out there. Um, As we know, they're supposed to be quarantining right now. Breaking the rules. Uh, You didn't hear it here. Um... We are quarantining because of this La Coronavirus. Um, it's a scary time right now. 2020, people. 2020. Uh, we are 102 years past the, the Spanish influenza that uh, killed very many people. And uh, kind of worried. Kind of worried right now that uh, something like that may happen. Hopefully not. Um, right now there's a lot of people that are unemployed I am one of them and uh, when I say a lot I mean there are 10 million people that just applied to unemployment in the last two weeks that is absolutely absurd those numbers are crazy Um, but not everyone is unemployed we got your essential workers out there still providing you with your every need um whether it be health care whether it be uh filling your prescriptions over at the the local pharmacy um food as far as uh delivery takeout um convenience stores and also supermarkets as well as um box stores, you know, providing you with the uh, groceries. I actually have an essential worker on the line with me right now. Um, he's a good friend of mine. Out of the 26 years of my life, I've known him for 26 years. Um, he is my co-host of the Danny D and DQ Untitled Sports Show, uh, or just the Untitled Sports Show. And he is an essential worker serving some... Uh, Delicatessence out there at the local market to uh, friendly neighborhood folk. Uh, Dan, are you with me there? Can you hear me, Dan? Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. You are on the uh, relevant podcast with DQ. How's it going, my friend? Doing good, man. Feeling fucking essential, dude. You feel you feel fucking essential, bro. Feeling pretty fucking essential, dude. <laughs> so um, this is not an interview by any means, my friend. Uh, this is just a, a nice little casual conversation between uh, some good friends here. But I want to start this off kind of like an interview and ask you a couple questions. Um, first thing, uh, how does it feel to be fucking essential? And uh, secondly, um, could you give us a little uh, insight as to what's going on in the, in the war zone, on the front lines out there? And, uh, I'm pretty sure I'll make my great-great-great-grandfather proud. I probably fought in World War One or two with my um, my heroics of going out every day, making sure that people have meat and cheese to live through this pandemic that you call the coronavirus. I feel kind of like a superhero in ways. They haven't given me a cape yet, but I feel like that's probably coming soon. Of course. Yeah. No, that's, that's I don't mind it because like not in a good not in a position financially that uh, me not having like a job would help uh, wouldn't benefit me. 
So to be still be able to work is it's a good time. Yeah. So what about the other part of the question? Especially because. No, go ahead. Uh, I said especially because I'm not working that close to people. Even though I'm working like an essential, I have an essential job title and I go to work still like every day. Today is my only day of quarantine this. I got some good quarantine in, you know what I mean? I feel like uh, Stan's dad from South Park is like, just getting a little cancer, Stan. You know what I mean? I feel like that like, with some quarantine. I'm, like, oh, I'm just getting a little quarantine right now. Just leave me alone, you know? Just getting a little quarantine. So how is it on the front lines? But, uh, it's good to get one of those days <laughs> once, a, once a week. Uh, it's pretty funny because people come in like all decked out with like shades on and uh, masks on and they, everybody looks like they want to rob the store because that's yeah. like what I would wear if I was going to rob like your local fucking like mini mart, you know what I mean? I, I yeah. put on like a big hat, sunglasses, or like thing to cover my nose to chin, you know what I mean? And gloves, no fingerprints, you know what I mean? So everybody looks like they want to hurt you. Yeah. Even like little old ladies, they still they're all decked out too, so they look like they're gonna do something mean to you. <laughs> Everybody's losing their shit about toilet paper. I don't know how many times I've been asked, well, when they're getting new toilet paper. I don't do anything with toilet paper. I don't work in any department that has toilet paper. They're asking but, uh, the guy I get asked in every the day, back. seven times a day. They're asking you know, the guy the in paper? the and I'm like, hey man, I'm not, I'm not sure where the toilet paper is. You know. It's probably in that aisle that has nothing in it. Oh my God. Yeah, I get asked about toilet paper. Toilet paper is like, a, I feel like to toilet paper is about to take over the dollar bill. Oh yeah, dude. It's a hot commodity. Yeah, man. It's a hot commodity. You know what I mean? I'd be like, yo, like, be on like let go or something and buy on like a fucking PS4 and they're like, I'll give you 200 cash. And then this other guy's like, well, I'll give you 212 packs of toilet paper and you're like oh that's a little better than 200 cash right now oh shit mm. um so what the fuck were we talking about before I don't know but it's fucking like it's like um I feel like that game is like coming to life what's the fu fallout I feel like it's like fallout like it's just not collecting my bottle caps like those might be worth the like payments Dude, it's like fight call out, um, pandemic, all in one. I know. What a time to be alive, DQ. 2020. 2020. I knew there was going to be something fluky coming on in 2020. It just made too much sense for something bad to happen. Oh, yeah, of course. Um. We're in a population control right now. Oh, uh, these kids. Friggin so I'm what you would call high as a kite. What about you? Yeah, I'm all I'm feeling myself. Good night. Because I cannot remember what the fuck we were talking about. I know we were I'm talking about Game of Thrones. Son. Yeah, no, but I but, but I'm saying before. Yeah, I, I asked you who your favorite player. I asked you who your favorite person was, and then he said something stupid, like somebody that was only in two listen, fucking scenes of an episode. But so, I wanted, obviously, I wanted to know who, like, an active person that is like mainly in the show, even if it's only for a season or two, not a scene or two. I said see, like a season or two, not a scene or two. And then I didn't know what you were saying because you're like, mm, 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 mm. so I said. Rhaegar Targaryen, ladies and gentlemen. I said Rhaegar Targaryen, yeah. and, and Dan found my answer to be very appalling. For those of you who don't know, Rhaegar Targaryen is, is Jon Snow's father. Spoiler alert. But, <laughs> um, Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he only he appeared... He spoiler in the first episode, in the he, first podcast, right now. But uh, he only appears in like two two scenes in the entire series, the entire eight seasons. But <laughs> another what, spoiler. But what Dan doesn't understand is I've read the some of the books, and Rhaegar Targaryen is a fucking badass. And in like the context of 
yeah. a song of ice and fire like Rhaegar Targaryen is like, listen, Dan, I read the fucking encyclopedia of Westeros, all right, bro? All right, bro. Take it easy. <laughs> but, um... I'm judging you, now. Uh, what was I gonna say? As far as my, like, answer to, like, someone who's actually appeared in the show more than, um, you know, a runtime of 120 seconds total, or, or maybe, like, five minutes, I would say, um, uh, Davos Seaworth or Jorah Mormont. But I'd say probably Jorah first. Ah, uh, so Davos. Yeah. Did you see, you see the, the, what is his name, Jonah Mormont? Uh, Jorah, Jorah Mormont. Jorah. You yeah. see Jorah get fucked up, dude? I don't even remember, Or get dude. fucked up. What, by White Walker? Yeah. I don't even remember, dude. He was on, like, them front lines of the, like, god-awful season eight. They, like, took on the fucking... The darkness, dude. He was leading, he was leading the pack out there. Oh, yeah, didn't he die, like, saving Khaleesi? Yeah. Yeah, of course. The only way it would be because he's a horny old man that just wanted to get her. Which is understandable. She's very pretty. She's very pretty, he says. She is. She's yeah. Very pretty. I don't know, man. It was a great show to, like, spend eight years. Definitely ye had a crush on her. To spend eight years to build all the way up to fucking nothing, dude. Like, the very second to last episode, the entire episode is just Khaleesi destroying. King's Landing, the entire episode, mm -hmm. and I'm like, alright, when are they gonna cut away to something else? Because there was other people in other parts of the map, like, there was still shit that hadn't been wrapped up in other parts of the story yet. And I'm like, alright. Alright. Mm -hmm. And then, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? They're really gonna wait till the last episode to wrap all this shit up? And of course, that's what they did. And that's what they did, yeah. But, hey, that's what happens when you start a fucking... Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you start a show about a series of books that aren't even done being written yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can kind of fuck yourself over. But everybody has sol can take solace in that uh, if they start reading the books or if they do read the books, that George R. R. Martin's going to make the story different. It's already different than the show. It's like it, they kind of started veering paths in like the second season, so. Mm-hmm. They gave you like the base. And... They did good. They just they just kind of came up real real flat. Yeah. A hey. fun part right there. Hey Dan, guess what? This is gonna be my slogan for this podcast. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's fucking. It irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It's what has happened already. Everything, anything that like. I agree. Just, and any thing on a note like that. Or, or even like a negative news, it's irrelevant, dude. But, um, well, you know, dude, you know, who my not that you've asked because you're a very terrible host, but you didn't ask me who my favorite guy was, but that's yeah. okay, I'll tell you anyway. Yeah, no, shit, sure, dude. Who, who's my your favorite, favorite character? Guy, <laughs> I didn't, uh, I don't know what his, I'm like drawing a blank, I think it's because I'm like really high. I'm drawing a blank of what his actual first name is, but he goes by the dog, the hound. I am the hound. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> the hound is my favorite. I like Gre him. Gregor Clegane, sir. Is that it? Yeah. Gregor, Gregor Clegane. Yeah, he's, he's badass. His brother's badass, too. I my... get him all fucking, like, aliified and, like, a zombie man. I was like, oh, shit. Dude, I, I feel like that's the story that someone read that story in the, in, in the WWE and then that's who made up the Kane and Undertaker fucking stable, dude. Like when Kane... Yeah, yeah. When, basically when Kane was coming in. Because, like, that book was written before, like, Kane, the Kane character. Yeah, I was scared of fire, too. Kane didn't like the fire in the beginning. Yeah, and remember Undertaker supposedly burned him? Yep. Yeah, it was literally, like, the Kane and Undertaker of Game of Thrones, dude. Oh! Oh, oh. Yeah, that's true. Daniel, Daniel. I remember what yeah. we were talking about. Oh, wow. So, ladies and gentlemen, as, as millions of you know out there have seen, if you haven't seen, then you're not subscribed to Netflix because they literally 
tell you to watch it and play the trailer after every single thing that you watch. There's something out there called Tiger King. That's what we talked about, Dan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's talk about it. Tiger King. So, let's, let, before we go first to... First things uh, first. Go ahead. First things first. Fuck Carol Baskins. F- Carol fucking Baskins. <laughs> wow. Carol fucking Baskins. You know why the cow... Is there anything bad happens in your life. Carol fucking Baskins, dude. You know why the Cowboys ain't been shit for the last 25 years? <laughs> Carol fucking Baskins. <laughs> Carol fucking Baskins, dude. You know why Scott Norwood it's hooked it? Crime. You know why Scott Norwood hooked it wide right? Carol fucking Baskins. <laughs> Carol fucking Baskins, of course. Oh my god, dude. I should have known. So, Tiger King is this crazy documentary. I'm talking to you about it about it to you like you don't even know what you t- uh, I'm talking about that's right I just said the th- same thing three times in a row <laughs> Tiger King dude it's all over your mind dude alright first things everywhere with it just like how it is in the documentary Dan first things first mm-hmm. did did Carol kill her husband her late husband oh no sorry excuse of me of course her missing husband of course of course, she doesn't make that comment in the video when it is before they even start going in like detail on her, which makes it look like she did even more. Before they even get to that point, they're talking about how like when Joe gets pulled down by the tiger and he's like shooting like fucking bullets up there and trying to get her like to get off him and like yanks him and like gives him a nice tug and like pull. And he's like freaking the fuck out and shaking and all that. And then she's like, oh, like if somebody was going to try to kill him, they put sardine oil in there. And I was like, oh, it's sardine oil. It's so fucking exact, cow. That's too fucking exact, cow. How many nights have you laid awake thinking about this bitch? <laughs> I was like, yeah, you fucking whore, dude. I know you did it. So I feel like you got done here to think, like, after all the people that, like, are like, kind of like happily talking about how they pretty much fucked over a fucking Joe Exotic. In the video, and they're like, oh, look, now he's in jail for a bunch of years. And they're like, ah, nice. And, like, nobody thinks that they incriminated themselves at all in this whole fucking documentary. And, like, it looks like fucking, like, seven more people are going to go to fucking jail before that, and, like, in, like, two more years. Yeah, so I don't I don't think that... Watch Je- out for that. Watch out for that Jeffrey Lowe, dude. He's a, he's a sly bitch, that one. Well, that's what got made me think about this, dude, because Jeffrey Lowe is the Ramsey, is the Ramsey Bolton of fucking <laughs> Tiger King. He is. He is definitely the Ramsey. There's like me. And Kyle Baskins is definitely Sassy. Because he's a fucking bitch. The Tiger King memes. Right, Dan? The Tiger Memes stock right now is very high. You gotta, you gotta buy in on Tiger Memes right now. Tiger Memes are the hot commodity. COVID 19s are going if, down. Tiger Memes are coming up in a if, if, place if, on pull. People, more tiger memes. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to be in, in 20, 30, 20, 40, 20, 50 looking back on your timeline. God forbid you pass away. Your children, you, that's what people are going to do. And when you pass away, they're just going to scroll your Facebook timeline in, in, in uh, order, <laughs> chronological order from the start to when you sign, first signed up for Facebook until you pass away. You don't want your 2020 to go by without... Your essential Tiger King memes on your timeline, ladies and gentlemen. You, you need... need at least three. You need at least three to get to heaven. At least three to get to heaven. Um. At least three to get to heaven. Uh, what was I gonna say? The the um the one that made I was talking about specifically was uh Tiger King, <clears throat> co- uh, comparing Tiger King people to um Game of Thrones characters. It was like Carol Baskin, Cersei. Uh, fucking yeah, perfect. Yeah, Joe Exotic. Spot on. Joe Exotic was a uh, um, Jon Snow, but dude, the Ramsey Bolton one, man, that was fucking hilarious. Yeah, that was spot on too. Oh, that, one was, that was really good. Oh, and uh, the fat guy being the the whisper, the um, the Varys. The the uh, fucking. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was unique. spot on too. Yeah. That was spot on too. And the fucking. The, yeah. the the kid with the glasses being Sam, like <laughs> even looked. <laughs> dude, yeah, I don't know who made that meme, but they got some fucking major props. They I know got, they went on the this. I know you ever they got real good. You ever see a meme and be like, "Why didn't I fucking think of that, dude?" 
Uh, I see memes that I think of myself, but not like into like full detail, like and get it to where it would be. Like, if, but if I thought about it more on like a particular thing, it would be pretty good. But like, then I see it, and it was kind of like the idea of what I was thinking of, of like for a meme, and then it gets. Then I look at how many like views, like thousand k views it has. I'm like, ah, son of a bitch. It's my calling. It's <laughs> <laughs> my calling. Mom, I'm quitting. Mom, I'm quitting my job. I'm gonna be a meme maker. <laughs> I'm gonna be a memer. A memer. <laughs> a memer. <laughs> no, no, I like I like meme. Memer. I like memer better. I'm gonna be a memer. You like memer better than meme maker. Yeah. Meme maker. I'm gonna be a memer, ma. Just let me. Just let a me memer. live my dream. Memer, memer, memer. I just wanna be a memer. You made me play sports memer, every memer, year, memer. every summer when I was a kid. Just let me do this one thing. Just need to make memes. Oh. Um, my life. No, but dude, what about in Tiger King, um, when one of Joe's husbands, uh, apparently neither of which were gay, <laughs> um, <laughs> plot twist, they were just, uh, really highly addicted to crystal meth, <laughs> <laughs> methamphetamine's a hell the of a drug. Part, uh, the best part of that whole situation was uh, well, it wasn't cool that the kid like killed himself. But, well, that's like, what I was just gonna say when he balls, when he killed himself. <laughs> I did. I was talking about his balls at the funeral because I had this oh Travis, I was just pulling his balls out, you know, and <laughs> grab him on my face. I'm like, oh, it's Travis's balls. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh my god, this guy. And he was just like a fucking like preacher too. He can like, <laughs> he can put him on put him on <laughs> your shoulder. Just... Oh, dude. Uh, I was saying that was funny. Don't tell me that here, kitty, kitty didn't didn't get a fucking million plus spikes in YouTube hits, dude. That fucking that that video, that music video, where he's talking about Carol Baskins feeding his wife, her wife to uh, her husband to the fucking tiger. The fuck yeah. the music video. Oh my god, dude. Oh, uh, the music video. Yeah, the the yeah, music yeah, video. It's like here, kitty, kitty, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, here, kitty, kitty. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That music, vi- that music video has got a million plus yeah. hits, dude. Dude, they got a free fucking Joe Exotic soon, especially with this coronavirus going on. But like, we need to let these heroes out, dude. This man Joe, there's this fucking walk. Joe Exotic will never get out, dude. He's gonna get out of jail in like a couple of days because of all this fucking. He literally from like the series, dude. And he's gonna do like. I'm like, guess what, motherfuckers? <laughs> Dude, he recorded himself. He recorded his own, like, incrimination, bro, though. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that Joe Joe Exotic was the one that lit his uh, alligator farm and, like, building on fire? It did not look good. It did not look good. It did not look good. It did not look good, not look good on this side. As soon as, as soon as they like kind of hinted towards that, I was like, yeah, but that, yeah, you could like suspect that. But then as soon as there was like a video of him in his, in his lawyer's office, like asking about like mm-hmm. the the rights to it right before that, like and then how like that producer guy, like oh like what about the contract? And then Joe's like I don't know. And the lawyer's like why why didn't you contact me and why didn't don't. I have a copy of this contract. And then he's like, do you have a copy of the contract? And he's like, no. And he's like, you know what I mean? So like, and base, cause remember the, the producer guy was mm-hmm. like, um, Oh, I own everything, Joe. Like, uh, since I came on, like I own even your online show that since I started, uh, helping produce it, like own the rights to it. Mm-hmm. And then he went to his, uh, Joe went to his lawyer to try to figure out if that was true or not. And then the lawyer's like, uh, if it was in the contract and yeah, you know what I mean? Once I saw that, Mm-hmm. I, I was like, dude, that is, that is not good. That is, that is like probably the nail in the coffin right there because it's That's like, not good. <laughs> no, because it's like, it literally, you just recorded yourself inquiring about this information and then finding out that like, what you suspected the worst case scenario is the truth. And then what would the best thing to do like in that well, in his mind, what would the best thing to do be? Fucking destroy it because he doesn't own the right to any of it. And that's what that guy was threatening to leave. Because, like, basically Joe was saying, oh, I don't need you. I don't need you. Walk out. Go ahead. Leave. Uh, I'll get another. And then he's like, he's like, I'll just bring it, yeah. the show to a network, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, Joe, I own the rights to the show. Everything we've been recording is in the contract. 
And then he realized that he could also screw him over with some of the shit, too. Potentially. Because they had recorded everything, bro. Everything. Like, you know how much doesn't make it onto the shows when they record shows like that, dude? Just like a movie, dude. Like, even like a hundred times more, dude, because they fucking record. They have cameras rolling constantly, you know what I mean? So much of it doesn't make it, dude. Like, so his point is... so So that guy's point is he believes that Joe might have done it simply for the fact that he be- be- Joe might have believed that, that guy could have or would have turned around and used some of that video evidence to incriminate Joe in the future at some point. Mm. So it did yeah, not sure. it did not He's look trying good. To watch his back. Exactly, dude, to cover his ass pretty much. And the, yeah. and the fact that he did, obviously didn't do it himself cuz he was specifically in in Florida or fucking where or wherever Oklahoma not Oklahoma some out of yeah, state no. Chicago that's what it was Chicago uh at a funeral that's that's that day you know what I mean mm-hmm. and that like covered his tracks like that that covered his traces it was, it was almost too perfect you know what I mean yep. but twenty two years dude I was trying to say to you to, um Jesus I can't even talk. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, brought to you by caffeine, nicotine, quarantine, and marijuana. There'll be quite a couple stumbles here. Um, <laughs> uh, the thing I was telling you before uh, was he got 22 years. Like he was facing 79 years, but he he um got fa- he got sentenced to 22. And like my wife and I were even talking mm-hmm. about the fact that like we were surprised that they brought up the murder for hire charges as well as the animal cruelty charges because they found the five tiger uh bones like bodies in the in his yard or whatever in his uh little zoo there um they lumped it together in the same trial and her and i were agreeing that we were surprised that they didn't like do separate trials for that because they're different crimes they're different type you know what i mean different types of crimes yeah, it's kind of weird. Doesn't make much sense. So, do you think do you think he deserves the twenty two years that he got? Uh, he deserves to go to jail. Twenty two years. Yeah, he deserves to go to Definitely jail. Deserves but to go to jail. Not that long though. Twenty two years is kind of harsh. I'd say I will throw a number Definitely on. Definitely to go to jail. I, uh, probably like ten. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Around ten with with a chance of parole after like six or something, and, and then good and good then behavior like or something. Like Fifteen, shit. but can get out, but could get out with good behavior at like ten or eleven, and like parole yeah. or whatever. Dude, what about that meme I tagged you in? That was my favorite one. Uh, with like, oh, uh. He asked, uh, I asked him if he yeah, was, yeah, I asked him if he was gay, and then he said no, and then I asked him if he was a Cowboys fan, and he said yeah, I was like, oh, well then you ain't that straight, or some shit like that, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that was so fucking funny. That one wasn't really that funny, bro, but, like, no, but, like, really no, 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 that funny. was fucking hilarious, bro, <laughs> that was the best one I've seen so far. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, dude. Yeah, Tiger King is a crazy thing out there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that was the other thing I said before, too, was... It's taking um, over, like, the... It's the big thing right now. Dude, I was... I, once we finished watching it, uh, I started watching other shit on Netflix, and then literally every time a movie ended, uh, that would... The trailer would pop up next. And then Tiffany was like, is this literally... <laughs> is it, Are they just gonna show this after every single thing? I was like, yeah. So you watch it, dude. They shove it down your throat. Yeah, but the one, the other thing I wanted to say that I said before too was um. It was worth the watch, though. Oh no, it was worth the watch, especially like with you yeah. in your quarantine bill right now. You know what I mean? Where nobody's gonna really do too much. It was a good uh. Yeah, for sure, dude. Good thing to try out. Yeah, because it's not. It's not even like it was like super it was long. Wild. Either. I did not think it was gonna be like that at all. Nah, dude. Um, but the but the one thing I wanted to say before too was that um, fucking. Carol Baskins, I didn't like that bitch before they even hinted 
that she might Carol Baskins. that uh, before they even hinted that she might have killed her husband because she's sitting there being like a fucking hypocrite talking about uh, how these other people are so uh, uh, cruel to them and because they breed them to uh, be handled like as ki- as uh, kittens or cubs. And then yeah, freaking they had, like, uh, like Joe's like thing, you could like pet cats, you could pet the little baby tigers and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And then, but and then I'm sitting there looking at her, dude, and she's quote unquote big cat rescue, and it's like, dude, she's got these huge cats in these tiny little cages. Oh, you know what else I thought was fucking hilarious, dude? When they're showing the music video that her company made with that corny ass like green screen and the and the redheaded girl is singing, she she's singing. Mm-hmm. They're wild, they're free, right? And behind her on the green screen is a fucking, as soon as she's saying they're free, is like a a sphinx or like a mountain lion or some shit in a cage, dude. Like. (laughs) (laughs) We're free. You know what I'm saying, dude? So she's a fucking hypocrite, dude. Yeah. They're freely, they're freely in the cage. And and think about this. At least she was. Pay- at least the other guys were paying their people. Mind you, it didn't sound like great living conditions, and it didn't sound like great pay, of uh, between Joe or that mm. Doc Antle guy. But she's getting fucking volunteer shit. She got a huge. She got a huge. Uh... Well, that Doc Antle got. No good. That Doc Antle guy seemed like he had it figured out. Like the whole yeah. like, big cat thing. Yeah. Yeah. But. Mm. Um, oh yeah, dude, right after, like, a few days ago, he was on Theo Vaughn's podcast, it was actually pretty cool. Was it? Yeah, yeah, it was cool. I'll have to check it out. Um, but, uh, she's turning around, dude, she got a huge inheritance from her, her missing husband that she shadily, like, switched over his will and shit, right, to, uh, to take it away from his, uh, his former family that she also yeah, like yeah. yeah that she also stole away stole from them yeah, yeah. so yeah uh, youngness she's got this huge inheritance she has volunteers like 70 something volunteers right and they got to like work up this this chain as if they're like like almost like a uh, belts in like karate or something like fucking red belt blue belt Green you belt. Have to get paid. You have to be at the blue belt. You have no, to green belt to no, get paid. none of them get paid. It's just years of experience and like what they specifically can or can't do. They're all volunteers. None of them get paid. She has all volunteers, bro. That's nice. So she don't pay nobody. It's just like reaps and, the benefits. And then you want to say, oh, it's donations? No, she asks for donations, which of course you would say with some place like named Big Cat Rescue, of course she's going to ask for donations, no. But then she also charges people to go in and see the cats, just like Joe and just like that Doc Antle guy. The only difference is they're, they're hands off. Even the trainers and the volunteers and her, like they, they never touch the cats. That's what they pride themselves on. They never handle the cats because yeah. the cats are wild and the cats are free, and and it's wrong for. Yeah, trying to pass that act, that like big cat act thing. Yeah, so that people are never to handle like big cats that. again. So they pride themselves that they like feed yeah, no, them through like a, a pole. She does, no, she only does that though because then she's number one in that chain. You know what I mean? Because they're all doing the same thing. Well, that's my point, dude. She's well, charging like, people. Money to look she, at cats. She's charging people to to look at cats, but judging the other people to charge yeah, for charging that. people to look at cats. But the only difference is the other people are also charging for the people like the experience of the people handling the cats. Oh wow, mm-hmm. you're so righteous. They don't handle your cats. Your 12 cats. Dude, 227 <laughs> tigers Joe Exotic had, bro. 227. I can't believe that. Do, do you see the shot of them running around the one pin? Like, like all, like 100 of them, dude. Like a bullpen, bro. And they, they were all just running around like crazy. Like, they were getting fed like pieces of like cows. Oh yeah, dude, they were kind of. Oh my god, what about their employees? What about what about their employees eating the fucking uh, old meat, dude? Oh yeah, the fucking old Walmart meat. Oh my god. Tiger King, ladies and gentlemen. Tiger King, ladies and gentlemen, go watch it, dude. Go watch it. I'm telling you right now. There's so much fuck shit in the whole thing. Um, it's kind of like throwing them like, yeah, you know, he also had like two husbands that are not gay. 
They do a lot of math. One shot himself in the head, but that's not. We're talking about tigers here. <laughs> Dude, that was crazy. I was not expecting that. When that happened, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. I was wondering the whole time. I'm like, where is this Travis kid? Why have they have? And they interviewed him. It's because he shot himself in the head before the Netflix people got the. Yep. Friggin'. So, uh. Uh, there was a couple Did things. Did you see how he married, like, that next guy that he married? The one that he's, oh been, he's like, God. with now? So. Yeah, yeah. He did, like, right after? Yeah. Like, it's... not too soon after Travis died. And then he invites Travis's mom to the wedding, and they're, like, the only people in the wedding. Yeah, two months later, dude. Literally two months later. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> dude, uh, this quarantine shit. They invited the mom from Travis. I know, I know, it's fucking, this quarantine shit is doing crazy shit, man, it's forcing us to watch Tiger King, it's forcing us to fucking stay indoors, dude, well, other than people like you, you essential fuck, um, but the other thing that it's doing is it's shutting down, uh, it's shutting down the sports world, Dan, uh, people are apparently really upset that yesterday was supposed to be opening day at Fenway, uh, I guess it's the first time that uh, there's predicting no baseball in April since like 1818 or some shit like that. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, or maybe it was 1881. Yeah, dude, so I don't know. Mad. I was mad that they canceled. Uh, I was mad that they canceled March Madness. Yeah, March Madness. Um, but the one thing that is so far so good is not being canceled, Dan, is the uh, NFL draft. Set to go down in three. They canceled XFL too. XFL, XFL was fun to watch. Dude, XFL is gonna die it's because sad, of coronavirus, bro. Uh, they need to add the XFL to coronavirus victim list. They need to add that number, bro. Yeah. And it's sad too because they were doing good. Yeah, dude, they're not gonna survive that. Vince McMahon put out too much money himself to, uh, fucking get that shit up and going and trying to keep it running versus well not versus the nfl head on but indirectly versus the nfl then you take on the coronavirus dude you might as well be fucking that character for uh, kratos from god of war dude just taking on the fucking three-headed dog dude Cerberus. you know what i'm saying yep like yeah Down hades yeah you're not you're not uh coming out of that battle unscathed but the N- the NFL draft, um, I'm really excited. Uh, not so much about day one because, as so many people out there know, if you follow the NFL, um, Buffalo, my team. I am a Buffalo Bills fan. I guess I should put that out there since this is the first episode. Uh, you can uh, laugh. Um, if you're a Bills fan, you can cry. If or, or if, <laughs> cry for the past, but but more more in the past, but but uh, cry tears of joy for the future. I guess I should uh, phrase that properly. And um, we don't have a first round pick because we traded for Stephon Diggs, uh, who's a pretty solid wide receiver coming from uh, Minnesota Vikings. He didn't want to be a part of the Minnesota Vikings anymore, Dan. And uh, I was watching a video with Brandon Bean, our general manager. Uh, they're doing some, like, kind of what we're doing right now, uh, video um, press conference uh, or whatever over the, you know, web web press conference. And uh, Brandon Bean was pretty much explaining how Buffalo's basically viewing Stephon Diggs as their first-round pick. And uh, I don't know. What do you think about that move, Dan? I can accept that. Um, the only the only problem I had with that move is just gave up too much to get Stefan Diggs. Yeah, but what about like specifically Stephon viewing Diggs him? The number one receiver over there, and what he a... is gonna help you during the season. You know what I mean? Yeah, and we'll think about this specifically. He's he he's like he um he said you know he's helping out. Uh, I mean no, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm so scatterbrained right now. Specifically talking about like um how he's like pretty much our number one pick like that's how Brandon Bean is viewing him like what do you think f- as a number one pick like too much he's a little old to be a number one pick yeah 
So here's here's part of the insight behind Brandon Bean, uh, Buffalo Bills general manager, uh, is for trading for Stephon Diggs. Because of this coronavirus, it factored in, Dan, just so you know. The coronavirus did factor in uh, to the, the trade because they're not sure about the timeline as far as uh, off season and what training camp and such is going to look like. So he was, it sounds like to me from the things he was saying is that they were planning on drafting a, a wide receiver at that spot. But because yep. they're not sure about the timetable for training camp, he didn't want to risk bringing in a rookie who doesn't know the verbiage and stuff like that for NFL schemes and then therefore wanted to go with a veteran guy who at the very least, even though he needs to learn our system, our offense, he at least knows like the routes and like verbiage and like like in the huddle and shit, you know what I mean? Uh, what do you what do you think about yeah. when you what do you think is when you hear that aspect of it? Like, does that change your mind a little bit? Yeah, I, it wasn't even just losing the first round pick that was like sketchy because you lose like a lot of other picks too. But my thing is, um, if yeah, because I figured you guys were probably gonna draft like a wide receiver with your pick, and I'd have to say there's like it's gonna be like an it's like eighty percent sure that like. Any receiver that's getting drafted in this draft is going to be as good or less good than, like, Stephon Diggs, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because Stephon Diggs is good, so the chance that Stephon Diggs is better than a lot of the rookie wide receivers that are going to be drafted is really high, obviously. But there, at the same time, there is, like, good, there is good receivers out there, too, this year. Well, the thing is, we could still go in the second round, too, you know, or even the third. Yeah. Because there is such a depth. I think that also factored in. I mean, not that we necessarily need one right now, but it is kind of looking a little bare after um, Cole Beasley in the slot. You know, I mean, we re-signed Isaiah McKenzie to another deal. Uh, he's okay, but we use him more on, like, sweeps and shit. Um, Robert Foster had a horrible sophomore season, dude. Sophomore slump. He had 16 catches. I loved Robert Foster fucking going. Actually, I don't even think it was 16. I think I'm just thinking of his number 16. I think it might have even been like 8 or 10 or something like that, dude. He had like a horrible number of catches. Um, and then Andre Roberts, dude, which, come on, dude. that, that That's a special teams player. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. Um, he's like He's like fourth receiver quality. Yeah, I think I think as far as the Buffalo Bills, I think they're doing a pretty decent job, dude. I I I agree. I think it was a bit much to give up for Stephon Diggs. Uh, uh to be honest, I'm not so much upset with what we gave up. It's so much what we got. We got Stephon Diggs, but I kind of wish we got something else than a seventh round pick, as well. Like because we gave up so many other picks, because we gave up a first. Uh, a third, a fourth, or something like that. Oh no, a first, a fourth, a fifth, and like uh something for next year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was a lot of picks. Yeah, it was just a lot of picks. Exactly. Um, if, so if we had gotten something like a fifth or something like that, as well as Stephon Diggs, like like or swapped like a fourth or like you know what I mean? Well, then again, not yeah. s well, swapping wouldn't help us because Minnesota was behind us in the draft order anyway, so that doesn't make any sense. But you, you know what I'm talking about, though, like getting something else, dude, even if it was a next year's pick. Yep. Um. But uh, so we. That's what they're they're building though, because they had the clean house anyway, and then getting two first rounds is good, good setup. Who's that? The Vikings. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they're already um, cleaning house. Um, we were talking a little bit before about uh your team, your boy uh Jeff Heathbar. He's gone, and I know you're uh, mourning that loss. Heathbar is gone. You're mourning that loss oh, like yeah, uh. It really bothers me. Sorry, I was gonna make it an inappropriate joke. I won't lo I won't try to lose all my viewers before I even have any. Never mind. But go ahead, talk okay, about how. Yeah, right, what's the joke? Here? Nah. A joke? Yeah, but it's not. It's it's inappropriate and insensitive, <laughs> and the time's passed, so it won't even work now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that Jeff Heath's gone, dude. Jeff Heath is trash. Uh, I like Haha Clinton Dix better than Jeff Heath, even though he's not 
the greatest you, safety out there, but you like, definitely an upgrade. You like clits and dicks better than Heath's bars? Yeah. Clits and dicks over the Heath bars, man. Did you see that uh, the Cowboys got Alden Smith, too? Yes, I did. You like that signing? That was kind of surprising. That kind of surprised me. I didn't know. He, I did, because uh, his ceiling is being like... Um, as being like Rolando McLean, who was like a first round pick, you know what I mean? Went to the Raiders, sucked, and then we brought him on for like a year or two, and he was pretty like good, you know what I mean? Oh, Rolando but McLean, yeah, he was a beast. Like a fucking Randy Gregory and like not play at all, you know what I mean? But I think he's been doing a good job of staying like clean and stuff, and he probably wants a nice crack at it. And if Alden Smith can play half as good as he did in San Francisco, that's an upgrade. You yeah, gotta dude. remember that 2015 Alden Smith, like from the San Fran, like that guy was a beast, like 2014 Alden Smith. That's a beast. Do you, do and you? And Pat Willis over there, fucking causing all that ha havoc. Do you think uh, the NFL season goes as planned? I don't know. I want the draft to still go as planned as it's uh, it's supposed to go, but um. Maybe man, that, that, maybe that could happen. You know. Yeah, it but the have, draft can be, also be the uh, draft can also be done like over kind of like how we're doing right now, like over the phone type, like call it in. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, just do it like over the phone. That's true. Oh, they could take they could take a page out of the fucking wrestling thing too, where they don't have like fans. Like if it gets to that drastic to the season, or if they could just like cut off a couple like fucking preseason games, or just like extend the, the like by a couple weeks if it's like gets to that point. Really, just def depends how this coronavirus goes. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think we're all a little if worried about that. In the next two weeks, then like the season should probably still go on as is. But like, if things just keep going up, like I think they are, so I'm not just kind of like because the keeps days keep prolonging it. They keep prolonging shit. You know what I mean? Everything just gets set to different like higher dates. Yeah, I think we're all a little worried about it, man. Uh, the coro meaning the coronavirus, uh, like affecting shit for a lot longer than uh, originally, originally advertised. You know what I mean? Don't even get me started mm -hmm. on the shit show of the fucking the media and our and our wonderful government at this time. That's a totally different uh, topic for another day. I seen a I seen a video of how um. It's like a like a uh, video of like like Chinese people that like you gotta watch it like in subtitles to like see what they're talking about and it was from like 2018 and this guy shows you like a little clip of the movie of like a, a random like episode of season and they're talking about like coronavirus and stuff and how it's like oh like they're talking about how like coronavirus is like it's like oh it's like the common flu like you get a like 20 percent like death rate and it's like but when man made and like basically talking about like it was getting fucked with and they could like raise it to 90 percent and talking about like chemical like biochemical like warfare yep that's um and i was like oh shit and that was like a movie from 2018 that's on netflix yeah that's the truth bro i mean well like i'm saying like that's the reality it's very possible to say that it's not possible is like kind of absurd you know what i mean you got to uh oh, yeah. You got to realize, like, not you, but I'm saying in general, you got to, people got to realize that, you know, it's not offensive or uh, xenophobic or any type of thing to, um, you know, just simply look at the facts that um, it's at least possible that uh, mm -hmm. this was a move in some type of biological warfare, you know what I mean? Even if not to it's cause weird. mass casualties, to crash our uh, economy, which, as you can see, is doing a pretty good job right now, even though it's not killing, you know, places like your employer or, you know, other big box chains or stuff like that. What about people like my employer, who's, uh, you know, employer of five and a small business um, in the events world that's literally str struggling. The last Good. two weeks, you know, we had no events going on. He literally lost money. My, I know for a fact my boss lost money because he was still keeping us on before. He just couldn't anymore and had to lay us off, you know? Yeah. I, I want to know, too, think about this. You know how like, it was a big thing like a couple months before the coronavirus? It was uh, people would try to put, like, signs that said, like, free Hong Kong. 
Yeah. And then, like, the U.S. would do, like, its, anything out of its power to make sure that wasn't, like, shown on TV and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, now, like, those guys are very quiet. There are a lot of rioting going on now with this uh, coronavirus. And then they say that but what is the original origin from this place right now is from, like, Wuhan, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Which is in China? Correct, correct. Weird. That's a weird, it's a weird, uh, it's a weird thing to th to think about. You know what I mean? Well, Hong Kong's an island, and the, and they a lot of they want like... that too. It's not just yeah. No, I know. I'm talking about like Venezuela too. Though. Like, there's a lot of people like revolting. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not man. trying to go into like this deep like talk of a conspiracy and stuff, but like New World Order kind of shit kind of seems like it's taking part. Well, that's the big worry. It's like uh, that's what I was talking. To, that's what I was talking about with my wife earlier. Is like you know, this is the yeah, time. Kind of right into it. Well, this is the time where like that. Remember that book that they had us read in high school, uh, nineteen eighty four, where it was like Big Brother's watching, and like you know what I mean. Well, I never, yeah, I never had to read that book. Yeah, but, but, I don't know what you're talking about. but you know, I what, I'm, you know what I'm talking about though. Fucking yeah. That's um, true. they well the thing is. They're put. They're pushing to get closer, like to actually make that a reality, dude. Because that's always been something that's been speculated since that book was written in fucking nineteen forty eight. You know what I mean? It literally like that's like that. Yeah. The possibility again, the, like looking at the possibility of that potentially happening. You know, it's been there forever, but the possibility of it actually becoming reality is like very closer now to than it's ever been dude because people meaning like the citizens like the people uh are talking about wanting to give up their rights some people not everybody not mm -hmm. uh, you know there are some people out there who see what the fuck's going on but people out there want to give up our rights give up our liberty liberties uh and suspend the constitution do all kinds of fucking crazy shit dude it's it's ridiculous, man. Mm -hmm. They want if you, they suspend the constitution now, then why ever go back to it? If 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 the economy if the economy is down now, they're suspecting that China or Chinese actors, like meaning like uh, people who are like working on behalf of China, are gonna start buying stock and shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then, therefore, essentially, China owning, like, our stock. Us. Yeah, owning us, pretty much, which they yeah. already do, but... Oh, shit, dude. All right, well, I think I'm going to wrap it up. It's getting pretty late here. Um, And, and as I like to say, I want to say, I just want to wrap all that conspiracy bullshit up with, uh, it's all, it's irrelevant. Um, You know, because this is the irrelevant podcast. <laughs> um. But the only thing out of that that was not irrelevant was the fact that coronavirus is a real threat. Um, I'm not going to be one of those uh, celebrity... Well, I'm not a celebrity, but I'm not, I'm not going to be one of those, oh, stay home, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm I'm not Big Brother. I'm not the government. Um, I'm not your preacher, pastor, or papa. But um, I am going to just say uh, be safe. Dan, that goes for you too. Uh, working over there, working with the community. Um, even though you said you know you're you're usually about eighteen feet away from people, and because of since this coronavirus, you haven't really been dealing with people face to face. Um, you know you're still enclosed in this place with them, and I just want you to stay safe. Uh, thank you, you essential Thanks, motherfucker. Man.